On the island of Mata Nui, the stage would be set for one of the most engaging franchises ever created. Bionicle was made as a line of buildable action figures as part of the LEGO Technic series. Awesome as the figures were, what made the series so intriguing was the highly detailed storyline that went along with it. It wasn't just told in one form of media either. Through books, comics, games, online animations, and other types of media, the Bionicle story unfolded and expanded over the years. The first part of Bionicle is often referred to as the Mata Nui storyline, or the 2001 storyline. In our last video, we covered the Mata Nui Online Game, a tremendous Flash game that took you through the Bionicle universe and showed you how the island of Mata Nui worked. You controlled the chronicler Takua and went from village to village helping the different Matoran with their problems. As the chronicler, it was your job to write every notable thing down to be recorded for history. Beats working retail, I'm sure. You witnessed the arrival of the six Toa, each of them in the image of the six Matoran villages. Tahu for Takoro, Gali for Gakoro, Onua for Onukoro, Lua for Leikoro, Pohatu for Pokoro, and Kopaka for Kokoro. These Toa were meant to defend the Matoran and also to fight against the evil Makuta who seized control of the local animals called Rahi. So they used their individual mask powers as well as the different elements to fight back. Makuta is able to attack in the first place because the god of the Bionicle world, Mata Nui, has fallen into an unending sleep and the Toa need to wake him up. Yeah, he shares a name with the island, and yes, it's very confusing. So as you can see, the story just started, and that's an absolute bare-bones explanation of everything that's happened so far. All in all, Mata Nui Online was phenomenal and one of the greatest Flash games ever created. So where do we go from there? Well, before they decided to make any movies or shows or anything of that nature, LEGO mostly told the story through games. Believe it or not, Mata Nui Online was not originally intended to be the definitive starter for the series. Two much bigger games were planned to tell the entire Mata Nui story arc, Tales of the Tohunga and The Legend of Mata Nui. Tales of the Tohunga was a game for the Game Boy Advance where you would control Takua and go to every village to save the Turaga from Rahi. Turaga are village elders, in this part of the story that's as much as we know about them. The title of the game was later changed to Quest for the Toa after a lawsuit with Maori representatives concerning the use of several terms that were considered sacred in their language. The original intent was to have the three major types of Bionicle have a similar naming pattern, Tohunga, Toa, and Turaga, but an agreement with the Maori people allowed LEGO to change the name from Tohunga to Matoran. In my opinion, this name change was for the better. Matoran just works better, I don't know. The Legend of Mata Nui was meant to be a sequel to the quest for the Toa. It was going to be an action-filled 3D platformer where you would control the Toa and fight back against the Makuta and his Rahi. Just two months ahead of its release, it was cancelled with roughly 90% of the game already developed. It's worth noting that in 2019, dedicated fans of the series were able to recover the game and sought to fully patch and release it. One thing you'll quickly learn about Bionicle fans is that there are very few franchises with such dedicated communities. The series may have ended in 2010, but the community has ensured that it's anything but dead. Now, the Legend of Mata Nui's cancellation would lead to a highly expansive form of storytelling through different mediums. In its wake, we received many different online games, so let's take a look at them and see how they are. Let's start with the game known simply as Bionicle Attic Media. What's an attic media? My guess is... media you make on the highest floor of your house, I don't know. The game doesn't have an actual title, that's just what fans call it. In it, you select one of the Toa, then you're thrown into this shooter game where you run around and shoot at Rahi. The game was intended to be part of a contest where the top 11 highest scores would be entered into a prize draw. As you can see, this game almost feels like it was made for a contest. It's alright, but it's mostly just running and constantly shooting everything in sight. At the end of each stage, you fight this giant caterpillar, which is cool, I guess. When you die, you lose a mask. When you lose three masks, it's game over and you have to send in your score. Check it out, it's a Bionicle game that asks for your address. Makuna must want to send Rahi to your location. This game is straightforward, but it isn't perfect. There aren't any differences between the Toa, so there's no reason to play as one over the other. It's just a choose-your-favorite sort of deal. But the designs aren't even that different. Pohatu looks exactly the same as Tahu. One of the things I've always loved about Pohatu was his unique mask design. In this, he looks just like a reskin. 
Also, in this stage, I think I activated a glitch because I was moving around for a while and nothing came at me. I had to close the game. Going back to reskins, the stages are supposed to represent different elements, but they don't feel entirely unique. They're just different colors, and the few differences there are are hardly noticeable. You can't really expect too much from a game like this, but it definitely feels like a game that was exclusively made for a contest. It's alright as it is. It's just a straightforward shooter game. Now let's look at another promotional game. Let the legend begin. The prize for this was actually a full set of Toa figures. That's incredible, isn't it? Imagine how much money you'd save. Let's give it a try. And it's just a matching game. Can't say much here. Though I did complete it in less than 20 tries like the game told me to. I'm waiting on my full set of Toa figures, Lego. The next game is called Huai Snowball Sling. And before we begin, I sincerely apologize for the quality, but as you can see, the game window is so minuscule I need an enhanced microscope to see it. Huai Snowball Sling is a sport from Kokoro, and this game itself is taken from a minigame in Quest for the Toa. You're a Tom Matoran, and you slide around with horrendous controls as you try to throw snowballs at the other Matoran. All things considered, you are sliding on ice, so it realistically shouldn't be easy to move. I just have a hard time figuring out how to get my Matoran moving. It seems like you can only go by throwing a snowball and pressing the arrow keys at the same time. It's really hard to describe. Even though I can't figure it out, this game is extremely hard to lose. Just keep throwing the snowballs and you'll take out everyone else. If you just let them have at it, the Lamatoran will always be the last one standing. When you lose, likely by intention, it says, you were snowballed. Could there be anything more insulting? And this brings us to a much bigger game, though with an equally tiny screen, the Battle for Mata Nui. Now this one has a backstory. The 2002 storyline introduced a new line of villains for the Toa to face. The Borak emerge on Mata Nui and start to destroy everything. Like the Toa, the Borak are made up of the different elements the Matoran villages were based on. It turns out that the Borak are being controlled by Krana, these blue insect things beneath their helmets. If a Krana makes its way onto a Toa or a Matoran, it's able to control them and make them do some horrible stuff. In order to stop the Borak, the Toa need to gather one Krana from each type of Borak. This was likely a subtle way for LEGO to say, Collect all the Krana, kids! Give us all your parents' money! During this, several Flash animations were made to show some of the fights the Matoran had with the invaders. Jala and Takua are at the front lines fighting the good fight, but many other Matoran come through and save the day. Most notably, an Onu Matoran named Nuparu constructs a weapon called a Boxor from a broken Borak. Nuparu and the Boxor would be released as what they called a Titan set. Also, you know how one of the big Bionicle memes is that love isn't canon? Well, not only do we get a romantic scene between Hyuki and Maku, we also see that Jala may have something going on with a Ga Matoran named Ha Lee. Meanwhile, the Toa are having their own fights with the Borak. These would be shown through comics and a few books by Greg Farshti. This brings us to the next game. The Battle for Mata Nui was originally meant to release in 2002, but due to some technical difficulties, it came out in 2003 instead. The start of it looks promising enough, with comic panels telling you the story next to a map of Mata Nui. Even though it shows seven different locations on the map, the game is only three stages long. You start off in Lake Horo, which is one of my favorite locations. I love the peculiar way the Le Matoran talk speak. Tree speak is really fun, you should try it out. You play control Toa Lua, Turaga Matau, and an army of the Matoran Kangu. I guess they didn't have the cash budget to make all the Matoran different. Now if you were anything like me and you just started the game for the first time, you'd likely be filled with ever confusion. It doesn't tell you a single thing. No instruction help or anything of the sort. You have to think plan it all for yourself. Most of the game is dark obscured, but you can see a little map in the corner. You have to individually select your fighter hero and move them throughout the map as if it were a board game. As you move into the deep dark, you can seek find the rest of the area. You're trying to find the Borok so you can take them out and take steal their Krana. You can select weapons to attack with, as well as different abilities to use or masks to give certain power-ups. If the Borok villains wipe out all of your soldiers, it's game over. I gotta admit, it's incredibly arduous to have to constantly move your mouse across the map and individually select every single character you want to move. As long as you confront the Borok with all your soldiers at once, it's fairly easy. In concept, at least. Sometimes, things just don't work and I can't figure out why. 
The worst thing about a game like this is you can't tell something isn't working because you're doing something wrong or if the game just isn't polished enough. In the second stage, you're Tahu with Turaga Vakama and an army of Jala. That's fun to say. You'd think you'd get the hang of it by now, but the biggest issue with this stage is how much it forces you to wander back and forth consistently being met with dead ends. Because you have to keep clicking your soldiers to move them, you can be running around aimlessly for up to an hour. Then you discover that the remaining Borok are entirely unreachable. So you wander the whole stage trying to find a way to reach them using every single one of your tools to try and climb over the wall, but nothing works. Now you either close out of the game or realize you can use some of your abilities from a distance. Again, they don't always work and I haven't been able to figure out what determines if they do or not. They regenerate over time, so as long as you're patient, you can just stand in one place and take them out one by one from afar. You can even do this with Borok that aren't hidden by a wall. The final stage is Gakoro, and it's even worse when it comes to the moves not working. I had a really hard time getting my army of Makus to attack at all. I did most of the stage with Gali alone. This was also when I discovered some other issues with the game. While trying to get my Matoran to fight, I accidentally built an unnecessary fort while trying out the different weapons. Then I was unable to continue the game because I couldn't get past the fort. They probably should have thought about that before they made such small passages you needed to move through. This game is long, but not because it's hard. It's because the stages take a really long time to complete. It can even get a little boring when you're moving around and waiting for something to show up. When you beat the game, you just get an ominous date and nothing else. Was it worth it to see a Borok telling you to remember April 2002? You know what? Yeah. Don't forget April 2002, everyone. Now before we move on to another game, let's get ourselves caught up with the rest of the Borok invasion. The Toa are able to find a Borok nest, and by placing the Krana in the holes, they're able to unlock suits of Exo Toa armor. These made for some interesting new toys. They then encounter the Barog, the two queens of the Borok and the masterminds behind the invasion. These toys were also interesting because of the controls that allowed you to snap their heads forward. Cool as they were, they were also very expensive and they're pretty rare nowadays. The Toa defeat them by combining their powers and imprisoning them inside a chamber of Protodermis, the chemical that makes up nearly everything in the Bionicle universe. When the Toa themselves make contact with Energized Protodermis, an especially powerful type of Protodermis, they transform into the Toa Nuva. These are upgraded versions of their original selves. With their new forms, the Toa Nuva are able to defeat the Borok Call, which are like the Borok but less colorful and more repetitive with their design. This is also when Tahu uses the Mask of Time, a powerful mask given to him by Turaga Vakama to control time. It doesn't end up working out, so it isn't really needed at this point in the story, but it's still a fascinating part of it. And that brings us to the Mask of Light. The Mask of Light was the very first Bionicle movie, which told the story of how Takua and Jala came across a mask belonging to a seventh Toa. We'll cover it in greater detail at another time, because right now, we're here to talk about the games that came as part of its release. On the website, maskoflight.com, many games were released to go along with the movie, so let's take a look at them. Let's try the Toa personality test. I want to see what the website itself thinks I am. And there we have it. You heard it here, folks. YouTuber Lucy Lilypad is officially Toa Lua. I thought I knew I had something in same common with him. You can also play this choose-your-own-adventure game where you control these two random Matoran during the events of the movie. You just go from place to place talking to every character with the crispiest images known to mankind. Just look at that. This is a game you need glasses to play. All of the choices you make lead to the same conclusion, so it's basically just a way to meet the characters and explore the scenery. It's also funny when they take exact scenes from the movie and put different speech bubbles over them. It's also filled with spelling errors. Clearly, this is the highest quality game the Bionicle Library has to offer. Now, they also made individual games for each of the Toa Nuva, so let's check those out as well. Just as a side note, one of my favorite things about Bionicle is how characters change throughout it. I love how the Toa start going by names such as Tahu Nuva and Lua Nuva after they become the Toa Nuva. Those little permanent changes are some of my favorite things in fiction. So starting with Gali's mission, you have to swim underwater and... Oh, guess I'm not allowed to touch that. You have to fiddle with the controls and get her to land on this yellow line, but if you land too fast, you die. Later stages add obstacles, which make it even harder than it already is. 
It's a little fun, but I'm terrible at it. The next game is Kopaka's Ice Trail, where you're Jala and you have to move your mouse across a trail Kopaka left to get across the ice. If you fall off, you- <laughs> Forget beating this game, it's worth it just to see this cutscene. Up next is Forest Flyer, Toa Hero Lua's game. You quick fly over the never-ending forest and avoid the obstacle clouds. If you crash wreck into them, they slow you down and take away your health life. It is an ever-exciting experience, but a little detail lacking. Onua's game is next, and it's a basic pattern recognition game. The tiles light up in a certain order, then you click them in that same order. Now you might be wondering what this has to do with Onua. Well, according to the instructions, Onua scored over a thousand. How's that for character relevant? Yeah, to be honest, Onua was usually the one who got the short end of the stick. The Onukorans in general never got as much attention as the other Toa or Matoran. I guess mining can be a tough subject to work with, but it's still kind of sad. But if you think that's bad, Pohatu's is just a simple matching game. You think Onua had it bad, Pohatu doesn't even have a high score of his own. They just outright didn't know what to do with him. Lastly, we have Tahu's game, which is lava surfing. You have to collect the tiles, but they don't show up unless you speed up. If you hit an obstacle, you fall off. It's even harder than Gali's, so you can imagine I see that message saying I fell off pretty frequently. And that brings us to the end of the Mask of Light games. At the end of the day, some are good, some are lacking, and some only exist to be used in a contest. But if you ask me, I'm satisfied. It's a nice trip down memory lane. I'm also really happy the website said I was Lua. I feel like I seek found myself. But... This isn't the end of the Matanui line of computer games. There's one more that acts as a prequel to The Mask of Light, while also acting as a sequel to the Matanui online game. This one is rather big, and I have quite a lot to say about it. So tune in next time, and we will tackle the infamous Matanui online game. 2. The Final Chronicle. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.